It's been really exciting to be in a place with new habitat and new birds to see for sure. Out of all the places to go birding in the United States, the Rio Grande Valley of South Texas is one of the best. Atop many people's bucket lists as a dream destination, what makes this area so good is its close proximity to Mexico and wide array of habitats that make up the region. Consisting of many bird species that can't be found anywhere else in the country, the Rio Grande Valley is a must-visit place for anyone looking to grow their ABA life list. While Derek had visited this particular birding area before, I hadn't ever had the chance. That is, until now. With a week and a half to spend in the valley, we made it our goal to find as many lifebirds as possible. But before even thinking about that, we had to actually get there. So one of our connecting flights actually got canceled, so now we are in the Nashville airport for like eight hours, longer than we were supposed to. But the good news is, there's a big window here. So we actually got some morning doves and some starlings. Could have drove and I think we'd get there at about the same time, but we'll do what we can. After more than 12 hours and two flights later, we finally arrived in Harlingen. The next day, we went to pick up our rental car and got started birding. After our big flight ordeal, we finally got the rental car, so now we're going to be able to actually go start looking for birds in the Rio Grande Valley in South Texas. So this is very exciting. Um, from the rental car place already, there's a couple species. There's pigeons, there's great tail grackles, there's starlings. So we're on the board with some common city birds, but we're going to start our trip to see if we can find some cooler things out in the country. Yeah, it's a little uh, cloudy and uh, like a little rainy today. Um, so it's not necessarily what you'd expect, but hopefully we'll still be able to get some good looks at uh, some target birds here. We devised a route that would take us in a small circle around the various hot spots in the valley and conclude near South Padre Island where we were staying. Even with many new birds in the valley to search for, we started out looking for a target bird that wouldn't actually be a lifer. Today we are on the lookout for a really cool owl species, the burrowing owl. There's one that's been seen in the area that we're going to be looking today, and apparently it keeps sitting on this particular cinder block or something. So we're going to look for that and see if we can find this bird popping out. It's a species I've seen before but never gotten really good views of. They've usually been very distant. We drove the country roads, keeping an eye out for the burrowing owl and finding other species in the process, one of which was my first lifer of the trip. We were looking for that burrowing owl and we saw a hawk on the side and it's a white-tailed hawk, so that's cool. This is the best view I've had of one and it's a new bird for Ryan, so first lifer of Texas for you. First Texas lifer, white-tailed hawk, and it is a beautiful hawk too. It has that brown or rufous almost color on the shoulder and then that clean white underside with just a little bit of barring. It's a really cool bird. After numerous passes up and down the same road, we finally noticed the bird we were looking for. There's a burrowing owl in there. Dude, did we just miss it? I don't know. Where is it? It's back. It's back there. Oh! Yeah. We got the burrowing owl. We just went by one of the things that it was supposed to be on and boom, it was just there. I don't know if we missed it the first time or I what. We just completely missed it because it's pretty obvious. We were like, where is it? Burrowing owls are bigger than I thought they would be because I've only seen them from a distance usually, and this one is kind of sizable. That's awesome. South Texas. Burrowing owl. Roadside. After finding the burrowing owl, we started making our way to our next location. However, with so many new birds to see in the region, we were constantly getting distracted. Just picked up a loggerhead shrike too, so we kind of have a good mix of birds that will sit up and survey. So we had the white-tailed hawk, the burrowing owl, and now the loggerhead shrike. So all are kind of perched up looking for food right now. This was the case when we saw another local hawk species that turned out to be lifer number two, the Harris's hawk. Harris's hawks are dark brown with reddish coloration on their wings. 
They have the same reddish color visible on their shoulders in flight, in addition to a dark tail band and white on the tips of their tail feathers. Harris's hawks can be found in more arid, somewhat open places, such as deserts, savannas, and fields. Harris's hawks are non-migratory and can be found in various parts of South America, Mexico, and the southern United States. Right near the Harris's hawk was a field loaded with scavenging bird species. This is just a crazy raptor field behind us. There's a ton of crested caracara, there's a few Harris's hawk, one white-tailed hawk, and then there's a bunch of cattle egrets too, with the obligatory turkey vultures. So there's a lot going on in this field, raptor-wise. We're en route to our next destination, but we keep being distracted by pretty much everything that we see popping up on the sides of the road because we don't even really know exactly what we could all find here or what's necessarily rare. So we got distracted by the Harris's hawks a few times, a few birds that we saw where we couldn't even figure out what it was, but it looked kind of funky um, and we never got views of it again. So it's been a bit of a slow process, but it's been really exciting to be in a place with new habitat and new birds to see for sure. We finally pulled ourselves away from the roadside raptors and headed toward our next location, Laguna Atascosa. Laguna Atascosa is the largest protected wildlife refuge in the region and is an area perfect for viewing birds and other animals. For us, it proved to be an amazing place to see many of the valley's specialty species. Right off the bat, we noticed two of them that were life birds for me. Life for green jay, that's like such a classic Rio Grande Valley species and they're just right here. They're so beautiful. That's so cool. The colors on the green jays are just phenomenal. Like you have that greenish color and like the, the blue by the face. It's just so neat to see. It looks like it doesn't belong in the wild. Just got my life for Great Kiskadee at the same place that we were looking at the green jays. It just kind of came out of nowhere and then flew away. So I got a couple videos of that. This place is just awesome though. There's some feeders and that's really drawing in the birds. So hopefully there'll be some other cool stuff too that I've never seen before. Lost Ryan, he just wandered off. I think he got distracted. The uh, green jays are being very, very vocal right now. You got your Kiskadee? I got my Kiskadee, yeah. Anything interesting over here? Um, just more green jays. One thing that was great about Laguna Atascosa is that it was optimized for birding, with feeding stations and blinds making it extremely easy to get close-up views of many different species. Additionally, the refuge provided a lot of information about the region's animals, and even had a gift shop. We continued wandering around from feeding station to feeding station, collecting more new birds, including olive sparrows, golden-fronted woodpeckers, white-tipped doves, and long-billed thrashers. All of these species would come and go from feeding stations, along with other more familiar birds, like northern cardinals and red-winged blackbirds. With the rain that had been on and off all day getting heavier, we checked out a few more places at the refuge from the car and found some water birds, as well as an interesting mammal. That was awesome. We decided to look at one more place. There's just a bobcat sitting there. So we stopped to watch it. Somebody else coming from the other way stopped to watch it. Eventually it pounced down the path, but you can really see how they're little predators and like the way it hunched down, real ambush predator. We left Laguna Atascosa and made our way to Laguna Vista. This walking trail was once destined to become soccer fields until some local birders and nature enthusiasts worked to preserve it as a place for wildlife. The biggest reason we were here was to find a tropical perula that had been reported at one of the three feeding stations that could be viewed from behind blinds. The perula was supposed to be seen with some yellow rumped warblers at the beginning of the trail and a gnat catcher was also in that group, I guess, too. So if we find some of those birds, we might have a good chance of finding it and we're hearing some calls. I hear some over there again, too. Armed with intel, we began our search of the scrubby habitat, going from blind to blind and scouring every inch of thicket in between. I had some whistling ducks fly over, and now we just had a female hummingbird at blind number two. And I think earlier people had had this at blind number three, so we want the third one. 
but they're set up really nice with a water feature and then some feeders and fruit, so really cool setup. Many different species were visiting the blinds and living in the scrub line in the trails. Some of the most abundant birds were the northern mockingbirds that could often be heard and occasionally seen sitting up. Eventually, we got our first sign that our target bird may be in the area. Just heard a blue green hat catcher call, which according to the last report was with the tropical perula, so it's possible it could be around here, but I don't see any of the birds making the calls. I just hear a bunch of yellow roam calls right now and the gnat catcher. Suddenly, we caught a seconds long glimpse of a bird with a yellow underside, a blue gray back, and a dark mask. Unfortunately, we didn't get any media of the bird in question, but it seemed to us like it was in fact the tropical perula. Well, we're pretty confident we have the perula. Ryan saw a bird he thought was a common yellow throat, and then he thought that that actually probably was the perula and then it flew across, and I saw it when it flew out, and it had all the right colors, and now it's refused to come back out, so we were just kind of pacing back and forth, and we're kind of at the mercy of the vegetation because it's so thick, but when I think perula, I think like up top of tree. This one seems to be more in the brush, so that's one big difference I've noticed, assuming that was the bird, but we'll definitely want, you know, to confirm and get a better look. So we uh, may be headed back here a different day. The bird never did reappear, leaving us feeling cold and unsatisfied. That was really rough. It's incredibly windy, damp, and cold out. And we got a look at it, but it was such a quick, brief look. No, I'm sure we got a look at it. It was you such a right. quick, My brief look at it that it's unsatisfying to the point where we need to try to find it again hopefully on a day where it's not so nasty out. And on a day where the birds maybe are sitting up a little more because today it seemed like they were very content to just stay in the thickets. So there was a lot of birds that were making noise and you'd see them pop out for a second, but not enough to really get any sort of decent look. So this is one that we're gonna have to try for again because we'd like to get some media of it. Yeah, it's that humid cold out. So it's like in the 40s, but it feels really bad. My, like the back of my thumb is going numb, so. Yeah, we just, we, I, we've stayed for a while and we, I, we may have been able to find it if we stayed longer, but like, I think it's just better to come back when the conditions are better. So that's what we're gonna do. Before calling it a day, we had one more quick stop to make. Where we stand right now is we've had a pretty solid day so far. We had burrowing owl, which was great. We had green jay and a lot of other species from South Texas area that are new for me. and. Uh, Always fun to see for Derek too, even though they're not lifers for him. But we're gonna try for one more cool species before we call it a day. And it's a species that had a big time restoration effort, the Aplomato falcon. So we're hoping to find one of these really cool falcon species as kind of the cherry on top of what's been a pretty solid day so far. So how this goes is we basically check the nest box and then we check any structures that they might be sitting on too. Um, and there's multiple nest boxes so if you don't see them at one you can check another one so that's probably what we'll do um doesn't look like we have any anybody home here today but uh we'll go down the road see if we can find one and if not then we'll try a different day but it's good to know the area and the places having no luck locating one of the falcons we decided to finally call it a day we headed back to south padre island with a solid day one total of 35 species more impressive than that was the nine lifebirds that I picked up on this cold and damp day. It was amazing getting to see so many new things in the Rio Grande Valley, and it was just the beginning of what would prove to be an amazing trip. Stay tuned for the next video coming out about the valley. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.